Welcome everyone to the Tavern Keeper Short Pours Edition. My name is Chris. This is a series about brewery tap rooms, their design, their decor, and the community that we build within. Uh, joining me today is a good friend of mine, Zach Rose. He is uh, part of the sales team over at Torch and Crown Brewing Company. They are based out of Manhattan and uh, have been brewing beer for a while. You can get their beer. We'll talk about how to get their beer in a little bit, but they are just on the precipice of opening a brick and mortar. Uh, it will happen very soon, I am sure, once, once we are allowed to see each other in person. I'm sure that's the, the main hurdle at this point because it seems sure. like we jumped all the other hurdles. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Same thing in the middle of all this nonsense. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're, it's, it's actually, it's, it's nice to be uh, social on a particularly rainy day. We actually like, it's nice to see a rainy day. Now you look outside because you're like, man, I'm not missing anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the rainy days at. are much better than the sunny days. Just kind exactly. Of <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Cool. Thanks so much for, uh, for jumping on. Um, of course, dude. I've been starting to do this series. Uh, uh, the series proper is, you know, uh, um, a set of interviews with uh, uh, brewery owners and uh, people who run tap rooms and, and build tap rooms. The short pour series is all of my industry professional friends uh, who, who have no shortage of um, experience with tap rooms and experience with community. Uh, mm -hmm. Quite quite often, it's it's um, the folks on on the sales front and the folks behind the bar who I think have the their finger closest to the pulse of community. Um, so my first question for you is, um, or actually no, really, really, really fun side bit. Uh, Zach and I, we met, uh, cause he was, you know, I did the, I do the buying over at Earl's Beer and Cheese. Zach was a sales rep for a couple of distributors and we met that way, but we actually went to college together. We went to Rutgers together, uh, though we didn't know at the time. And we pro at the same, ex the same exact stretch mm -hmm. of years. And I believe we mm -hmm. were probably in the same dorm at least one or two of our first years, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, I think we, I think we were actually like- Quads, right? Quad one, quad two. Right? One of the quads? Did, did you migrate to the towers? I never did. No, I was quad okay. one and then I was right. quad three. Fair, yeah. all right. Elevated your status a little bit. <laughs> That's right, you jump up, you, you leapt over <laughs> quad two completely. Um, <laughs> um, but wait, wait, where did you live? Where did you live your first couple of years at Rutgers? Uh, First year I was in quad one. That's it. Was, yeah. It was like the the super protected house for people that were afraid of college. It was the worst experience ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I got put there. Did you you didn't sign up for that? You didn't say on your application no. I'm super scared and, and, and I need to be No, there was no daylight. No daylight coming through the bars. There was nothing. It was the worst I, experience of my life. I do remember the last specific lack of daylight. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Quad, we're, we're residents. I, I mean, I don't remember what house I was in or what numbers they are. But right. anyway, we'll, we'll hash this out. But it goes to show you that, you know, community, community expands and community is transcendent of <laughs> space. The circle of life. We've, we've, yeah, we found each other. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so jumping into the brewery taproom side of things, um, did you have a, before you were in the industry, did you have a specific uh, experience at a brewery or with a brewery that really sold you on the industry and said, yes, this is, this is a really cool, cool, um, thing and, and communal space and communal industry. Yeah, for sure. So I would have to say for me, that was, uh, Amagang for BCTC. Oh, shit, I remember the date and everything, uh, back in August of 2014, um, yeah. where a bunch of us, we heard about this thing a few months prior and, the thing that basically the thing that got us was you can pay not a lot of money to drink a shit ton of beer and we were just sold. The uh, so exactly like who knew these things existed? Um, so we we packed up our bags, we got our tickets, we got everything, and we got there and it was just a sprawling campground. Like it was it was beyond anything I'd ever seen before. There were there were hop vines where you could actually go up and smell the the hops that they were growing at the time. Over to the left was the actual brewing facility. You have these 200 or so different vendors, 200 or so different vendors uh, just pouring whatever you wanted at the time. There, were, there was food, there was a stage, there was actually a, a sad clown. Uh, Puddles, Puddles a sad clown. Um, it, was singing, a music, it was a musician or is this a clown yeah. that happened to be there? I, I guess a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he was <laughs> depressed as anything, but belting out tunes. I, I, I like, 
popular songs that he would just destroy, like just killing it, despite looking like he was about to split his wrist. It was insane. Um, but yeah, we we camped out there. Um, we just had a great time and just kind of seeing the vibe and being able to talk to people about talk to people about the things that they sell and things they're pouring us, but also like being and talking to these people that genuinely believed in what they were pouring us. Yeah. Um, it kind of gave me this it was like this inspiration for like I like beer, but I've never thought of it as more than just the thing I consume. Like I kind of started looking at it as like I like it, but maybe this is something I can actually do, uh, you know, do for a living, do as a career. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a really cool, and I've experienced this too when I started to visit breweries. There's a collective ownership of the uh, of of the industry, um, you know, belonging to all the people who are part of it. The same concept I feel like is like a, a an employee owned company. It's almost like an employee-owned industry for the mm -hmm. most part. It's the craft industry where everyone you talk to feels feels very very um, connected to it in, in sure. a wonderful way. Did you? Um, that's awesome. Did you drink a lot of Omegang beer? Or just a lot of like the whole gamut of beer that during that festival. I mean, I'd be lying if I told you I remembered any any of what I oh, had. Right. I know I wrote right. it down somewhere, but eh, yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> nay, nay. That's cool. I, I had a couple of festivals when I was at Solo that I'd write down and be like, oh, take a note on this. This all Right. Like, I'll come back to that later. Like, I might find this where I'm at. But... but then they all start blend together by the end and you're like, ah, exactly. <laughs> that's cool. Man. I've never been to BCTC. I've had a couple of friends who have gone and camped and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, everyone has wonderful things to say about it. Um, we'll get up there. Hopefully they're, hopefully they're, they're back doing that festival again sometime. Yeah, I hope so, man. Or next, but we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, that's awesome. Um, and then uh, how long after that experience did you jump into the industry? Um, it was about three years. This is year three, actually, yeah. coming up on next month. Um, nice. What were you doing yeah, before? I was in technology sales, just flinging software and yeah. not enjoying it whatsoever. <laughs> um, just calling disgruntled people and having them curse me off and sure. watch, rinse, repeat. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I... I I was sending my resumes out, but it, I just didn't have the experience. That was the, that was the big hurdle there. Um, so actually Shane down at Carmine Street Beers, he kind of, he hooked me up and gave me a bartending gig yeah, part-time on right. a weekend. Cool spot. And from there he, you know, I learned the lingo, I learned styles, I learned more than just con like the consumption aspect and like how to relate to people about beer. And yeah. he, he pointed me, he put me on the path, he helped me out and he's, a huge reason I'm uh, I'm where I'm at today. So I, Shane, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> That's excellent. We will let Shane. We'll link you up. We'll get you. We'll get you viewing this. Um, sure. I, feel, I I have my beer Sherpa too. His name is Flint Whistler. Uh, he's a great great dude who who That's works at Randolph. He's a he's a brewer at Randolph now, but he mm -hmm. uh, we work together at Rockaway, and I've learned pretty much everything uh, that I know. Uh, I feel like Flint Whistler in the very much a Sherpa things. name. He's a he's a Sherpa indeed. You know, you know, I can't believe you haven't met him. We'll, we'll all link up for drinks either over the Zoom or in person eventually. Absolutely, <laughs> or both. Um, that's awesome. Um, how about a uh, um, a favorite brewery tap room? It doesn't have to be your favorite brewery tap room, but just one mm. that you particularly like or is kind of in your mind or your heart at the moment that you're missing in the era of social sure. distancing. Do de CL in Montreal. Do um, Yes, we've been there. I love that. Right? I love that. My, my wife went to school in Montreal, and so we did the trip this past summer. No shit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah. a little bit of business and pleasure? I suppose, yeah. She, she's okay. pretty removed. We're both pretty, we're, we're both pretty removed from, from our college years. So she has, I, we saw a couple friends up there, but it was mostly just okay. like seeing the sites. And that's where she, you know, dormed. And yada, yada. Mm -hmm. um, but I love, man, I love Giseo, um and brought home a bunch of beer from them. Um, and I, I was, it was wonderful because it was this, this – really low key spot. It was almost like just mm -hmm. sitting in this French cafe almost, yeah. <laughs> you know, like a French coffee shop or something like that. Yeah. You wouldn't even know that there was a brewery in there unless you just <laughs> actually happened to look around <laughs> and say, oh, wow, everyone it. is, everyone has a take you in front of them. What is going on here? Like, yeah. You don't really even think about it. Yeah. They're, I remember the listing fabulous and, and the pretension level being super low. And, um, and also, I mean, like, I, we had a lot of working parts when we went to. It was me and my wife, who was pregnant at the time, and my, you know, two-year-old daughter. And, um, mm. and I, was, I promised them I wasn't, we weren't going to spend a lot of time there, even though they were protesting. But I still, I was like, no, so we're just we're going to be quick. Right. We have to do this. We have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was still, like, it didn't feel like it, it was crowded, but not like it didn't remotely feel 
overwhelming. It was really, mm-hmm. really nice. Um, I remember, I remember asking the bartender for a local recommendation. I was like, can I, you know, something that you guys make here that's yeah. native to Montreal, native to Canada. And he's, he's like, well, I've got this really great American pale ale I want you to try. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I know it's, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> and that's, that's what I ended up having. Um, sure. But it, you know, made me think a lot about us as Americans. We're, we're very much like, oh, you know, check out this Cezanne we brewed. We're, we're really proud mm-hmm. of it. We did a really good job. And <laughs> probably someone right. from Belgium is like, great. Anyway, just give me the haziest IPA you have. <laughs> that's what I came here for. <laughs> right. Um, that's, that's awesome. Uh, uh, was uh, was just was just your part of your plan, or, did, or is that something that um, you kind of stumbled upon? We n- not even we were. Uh, it was actually I think it was the same year, twenty fourteen. Actually, a lot. Um, well traveled. Yeah, uh, yeah. Apparently, which is not my norm, <laughs> but uh, no, we were we were just there for for shits and giggles, frankly, and we were kind of just wandering about. Uh, we service they, this is back when like you couldn't really travel and have service and not pay a ton mm-hmm. so we were just kind of wandering about we're in the middle of the rain we see this castle across the street that apparently was actually a a, a fire station or a firehouse yeah, i remember this that's so good right like we're like something someone regal must live in there and then the fire engine just shoots out <laughs> like oh that's the purpose it serves and then we but, looked across the street just to get out and it happened to be due to ACL, and it's it was it was amazing. Like it, yeah, we I think it was maybe four of us, four of us. Yeah, and we we walked in, got a small intimate table. It wasn't even too loud considering how small and condensed and like packed in the place was. But you never felt like you were like you were on top of anybody else. Yeah, and it's like everything. It just checked every single box. So like I just I just they had a little uh, there's a little brew house. It looks like right there i don't know if, how much right. brewing or if any brewing they do there but it's nice to, mm-hmm. to feel like you're really part of it and like that's oh, a fresh product it's right the hell there which is cool exactly um and the montreal scene was great that's cool man um how about a uh, like a niche brewery some a brewery that within their tap room does something very specific and and mm-hmm. does a good job at, at at really um honing in on something so this one actually isn't even so much about what they do it's just the like the physical establishment itself that really just stood out to me. Um, it's Lazarus down in Austin, Texas. Okay. Um, so I hear, I hear so Austin like, has a really fabulous scene. Uh, they Austin do. is like almost, almost like Asheville territory as far as people are recommending right. it when they come to the tavern. And you can just walk from place to place to place. Like if you just map it out right, you can just bounce around and hit a lot of really dope breweries. Cool. Um, this one just happened to be in, it, it happened actually to be from, we didn't even know it was on the map. I guess we didn't really do our research uh, as well as yeah. we should, but we were getting from A to B. It was 98 degrees in the Austin summer heat, so we were all dying. Good times. And then this oasis pops up. Looks almost like a mechanics garage. Um, you walk in, just some dark metal, some dark wood, kind of subdued lighting, but like you, there's a boiler to, like, there's a boiler tank to your right out the spent grain like it just it just had this aura about it and like this is this feel where it's like holy shit this is exactly what we needed exactly when we needed it yeah um and the brews we had were really great i think we had a like a, i think at a coffee at a coffee cream ale with honey mm-hmm. couldn't tell you the name of it but like it's <laughs> obviously still in my mind to this day yeah um so like that is just a place that has always stuck out to me just looking at the inside i'm sure if, if you know if you look up the uh, the place on Google, you'll see what it's like. And it's just, that's just always, a, um, this guy just love the aesthetics and then, you know, they also serve really great fucking beer. So that doesn't hurt. That's fabulous. But the, the tap room does so much work towards cultivating that experience, right? I can, you know, I've been to a few where I, the moment you walk in and your first interaction with the bartender, um, I had this, it comes to mind, uh, there's a brewery called Gibbs 100 down in, um, down in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and uh, the bar—just yeah. the bartender I had—and I had him two times in a row. That's where my wife is from. Um, just immediately, I was like, he, he was so welcoming. Um, his name was Ross Jeffries. Great dude. Um, I try, I'll try to get him on on this horn. Um, but immediately, I was like, I, I don't live here. I'm a part of this. I'm a part mm-hmm. of this. I could be from Antarctica, Antarctica, and I I would be made to feel part of this, which is awesome. Right. So it sounds like lots and of that's just 
yeah, had that aspect. That's great. Um, and then uh, a tap room you haven't visited yet, but you would like to get to once they let us out of the house. Uh, once, if, when. Hmm. <laughs> if, when. Uh, <laughs> I would have to say, uh, so I've been getting a lot of beer in the mail lately. Mm -hmm. USPS, I hope you're not watching this, but. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think everyone has bigger fish to fry right now, as <laughs> long as you're not being real deviant. Sure, yeah, that's fair. It's only beer, I swear. Um, <laughs> it's uh, Hubbard's Cave out in Illinois. Um, okay. I've just been getting a bunch of just really dope barrel-aged imperial pastry stouts, uh, sours, IPAs, just everything I've gotten from them has kind of been like a holy shit moment yeah um, cool so that is just a place where i would love to go in because obviously you can you can kind of get these things through the mail you can get them through your friends but then there's always those things that are at the brewery yeah. that you're never going to have elsewhere so like i if if these things that i'm getting sent to me are, are blowing my mind i would love to know what they're actually serving in-house and serving their their loyal customers that yeah they might just be like, oh, yeah, this is this is the great thing they serve every single day. Like, I would love to try some of that stuff. That's a great point. I uh, tagging on to the, the dark beer brigade. We uh, we went to we have family in San Diego and we went to Stone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so my you know my wife was a uh, you know once upon a time a pretty picky beer drinker, and um, Stone, which is you know known for their fabulous aggressive IPAs, was the brewery mm -hmm. that sold her on dark beer when we went because they had all these like specialty in house dark beers coffee stout, barrel aged, mm -hmm. imperial stout, this, that, where, where that kind of completely opened her mind to stout. So, so oh, sure. um, that was cool. I, I mean, mean, you're, you're a dark beer, you're a dark beer person. Uh, dude, I'm a complete yeah. masochist. Like <laughs> if, if it could be 90, it could be the 98 degree Austin weather outside, just dripping buckets. And I will yeah. guarantee crack open a <laughs> bourbon barrel aged imperial stout at 14%. I don't care. That I'm, is, I'm with you. I'll do ice cream in the winter too. I think there's nothing wrong with mixing here. Right? Going doubling down on the temperatures, right? <laughs> anyone, who, anyone who says otherwise, it's just it's blasphemous. That's right. You like you like dark like if 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 you if you um, conditionally li like dark beer or something, you might not actually like it. No, no, you're no you're no friend of mine. <laughs> no friend of mine, and you ain't no friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> what are you drinking, by the way? Uh, so shameless self-promotion right now. No shame. Uh, uh, drinking my own brand, uh, Torch and Crown, Torch Park, uh, 8.5% yes. West Coast IPA collaboration with North Park. These guys out in California. Hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, we did that with them and I feel like there's a severe shortage of West Coast IPAs or just even just like bitter yeah. dry IPAs and that's like, yeah. that's, I, like, I think so. I think they'll make a I think they'll make a comeback. I think everybody is making making a point to uh, still mm -hmm. revere the style. It's not an antiquated style over here. It's it's, it's sure. just a, it's just taking a taking a break out here, and I think it's going to come back. Um, I'm actually drinking their label is gone because I'm I'm a masochist as far as labels go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was it still is uh, a torpedo uh, from okay. Sierra Nevada. So in the in the same world, it's nice to be sharing a style right oh, now. For sure, I mean that's a fantastic beer right there. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, cool. Uh, so that's awesome. Thanks for sharing a lot of these thoughts. Hey, of course. Um, tell me before we finish up where we can get where and how we can get Torch and Crown beer. Sure. Uh, so there are really two good ways to go about it. Um, well, three actually. Um, obviously, support your local bottle shops uh, in this time right now if they have us. Obviously, get us uh, if they have other things sure get that too but mostly get us um, carmine, carmine street is still up up and running right now correct oh, yeah, yeah they're still they're still uh they're still uh pushing mainly the bottle service that's really the main thing that most people can do um still filling growlers but uh yeah you can't really just sit and have a beer anymore so sure. you know support your local bottle shops when you can um second way is online at uh, torchandcrown.com forward slash orders uh we still have Six of our SKUs online right now. We have our Almost Famous IPA, our Sub Rosa Lager, our Runner Up Pilsner, our Broken Mirror. I love Sub Rosa. It's great shit, right? Sub Rosa, um, Almost Famous. Those are those are such great, solid. Yeah, those solid, aren't going. Uh, those aren't going anywhere. So. Yeah, you'll get this. Um, we have our Broken Mirror 
uh, double IPA that's a collaboration with Aslan. We have the Torch Park uh, West Coast style IPA that I mentioned, uh, collaboration with North Park. And then we have our Erebus, uh, we have our Erebus Stout. Um, not super heavy, but just, just heavy enough and kind of light enough and hits a very perfect middle ground where it's nice and chocolatey and roasty, but like not too much where you are unable to operate heavy machinery afterwards. Um, yeah. You can, you, um, your, your head brewer, Joe, is um, mm -hmm. formerly of Kane, right? And he, he is famous for his, his Imperial Stouts, right? I've had the Heavy mm -hmm. Crown. That's, that's, a, that's a, man, it's a wonderfully yeah, it's, balanced Imperial. It's great. And it, it's kind of dangerous because you can drink it and you won't realize that it's put you on your ass too later. So, like, you've got, <laughs> you got to be careful. It's it's delicious, but you've got to be careful. This is a time of patience and a time of ease. No one's patient right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got sidetracked. So, uh, yeah, so go to torquecrowd.com forward slash order. Um, you can place an order for delivery. Uh, we'll show up to your doorstep within three to four hours. Typically, the, the window is uh, order by 2.30. Get it between three and seven, uh, seven days a week. We're delivering to Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn. If you're below 23rd Street, you can actually get it within an hour. There's an option for that on the website as well. And then there's also an option to uh, pick it up at the brewery. So that's number three, where you can come by. We're at 12 Van Dam Street down in Soho. Uh, come by, shoot the shit with us. There's always somebody kind of standing out there just harassing or haranguing whoever happens to be walking by. Uh, you can, you know, come chat with us, kind of get a peek inside to see what the what the the restaurant's gonna look like restaurant slash uh, tap house yeah and uh yeah you can place an order right there and we'll we'll hand it to you as we're talking to you uh sure. that's an awesome. option on the website as well so yeah you got a couple ways to go about it. we'll we're just trying to get the good beer in the hands of good people so cool that's amazing my friend well thank you so much this is a really fun chat hey, man, it's really good to to connect on this on this raid <laughs> yeah man it was great to actually have some uh, some contact yeah some, uh, some, all right brother. some actual face-to-face -face. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll do it again sometime. Um, thank you so much, guys. Check out Torch and Crown. Um, grab their beer to go and keep an eye out for when they're open because that's going to be a really hot spot downtown. Only brewery in Manhattan, right? Like real, yeah. real proper. Only, only one. <laughs> um, I, I always like to say at the end of these, uh, you know, um, enjoy your local product, grab your local product, enjoy in moderation. It's a tough time being in isolated. So uh, if, if you want to talk about moderation, reach out to me, reach out to your local brewery. We're all happy to chat about that. Um, and um, cool. All right. We'll catch you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you see anybody. Cheers.